Knights of Labor K of L, officially Noble and Holy Order of the Knights of Labor, was an American labor federation active in the late 19th century, especially the 1880s. Its most important leaders were Terence V. Powderly and step-brother Joseph Barth. The Knights promoted the social and cultural uplift of the workingmen, rejected socialism and anarchism, demanded the eight-hour day, and promoted the producer's ethic of republicanism. In some cases it acted as a labor union, negotiating with employers, but it was never well organized, and after a rapid expansion in the mid-1880s, it suddenly lost its new members and became a operation again. It was founded by Uriah Stevens on December 28, 1869, reached 28,000 members in 1880, then jumped to 100,000 in 1884. By 1886, 20% of all workers were affiliated with the coal, ballooning to nearly 800,000 members. Its frail organizational structure could not cope as it was battered by charges of failure and violence and calumnies of the association with the Haymarket Square riot. Most members abandoned the movement in 1886–1887, leaving at most 100,000 in 1890. Many of them chose to join groups that helped to identify their specific need, instead of the coal that addressed many different types of issues. Furthermore, the Panic of 1893 terminated the Knights of Labor's importance. Remnants of the Knights of Labor continued in existence until 1949, when the group's last 50-member local dropped its affiliation. Topic. Origins In 1869, Uriah Smith Stevens, James L. Wright, and a small group of Philadelphia tailors founded a secret organization known as the Noble Order of the Knights of Labor. The collapse of the National Labor Union in 1873 left a vacuum for workers looking for organization. The Knights became better organized with a national vision when they replaced Stevens with Terence V. Powderly. The body became popular with Pennsylvania coal miners during the economic depression of the mid-1870s, then it grew rapidly. The coal was a diverse industrial union open to all workers. The leaders felt that it was best to have a versatile population in order to get points of view from all aspects. The Knights of Labor barred membership from five groups, bankers, land speculators, lawyers, liquor dealers and gamblers. Its members included low-skilled workers, railroad workers, immigrants, and steel workers. As membership expanded, the Knights began to function more as a labor union and less of a secret organization. During the 1880s, the Knights of Labor played a huge role in independent and third-party movements. Local assemblies began not only to emphasize cooperative enterprises, but to initiate strikes to win concessions from employers. The Knights of Labor brought together workers of different religion, race and gender and helped them all create a bond and unify all for the same cause. The new leader Powderly, opposed strikes as a "...relic of barbarism." But the size and the diversity of the Knights afforded local assemblies a great deal of autonomy. In 1882, the Knights ended their membership rituals and removed the words, "'Noble Order' from their name. This was to mollify the concerns of Catholic members and the bishops who wanted to avoid any resemblance to Freemasonry. Though initially averse to strikes as a method to advance their goals, the Knights aided various strikes and boycotts. The Wabash Railroad strike in 1885 was also a significant success, as Powderly finally supported what became a successful strike on Jay Gould's Wabash line. Gould met with Powderly and agreed to call off his campaign against the Knights of Labor, which had caused the turmoil originally. 
These positive developments gave momentum and a surge of members, so by 1886, the Knights had over 700,000 members. The Knights' primary demand was for an eight-hour day, they also called for legislation to end child and convict labor, as well as a graduated income tax. They were eager supporters of cooperatives. The only woman to hold office in the Knights of Labor, Leonora Barry worked as an investigator and described the horrific conditions in factories, conditions tantamount to the abuse of women and children. These reports made Barry the first person to collect national statistics on the American working woman. Powderly and the organization tried to avoid divisive political issues, but in the early 1880s, many Knights had become followers of Henry George's radical ideology known now as Georgism. In 1883, Powderly officially recommended George's book and announced his support of single tax on land values. During the New York mayoral election of 1886, Powderly was able to successfully push the organization towards the favor of Henry George. The Knights of Labor was an organization that helped to join together many different types of people from all different walks of life, for example Catholic and Protestant Irish-born workers. The coal was appealing to them because they worked very closely with the Irish Land League. The Knights of Labor had a mixed history of inclusiveness and exclusiveness, accepting women and blacks after 1878 and their employers as members, and advocating the admission of blacks into local assemblies, but tolerating the segregation of assemblies in the South. Bankers, doctors, lawyers, stockholders, and liquor manufacturers were excluded because they were considered unproductive members of society. Asians were also excluded, and in November 1885, a branch of the Knights in Tacoma, Washington worked to violently expel the city's Chinese workers, who amounted to nearly a tenth of the overall city population at the time. The Union Pacific Railroad came into conflict with the Knights. When the Knights in Wyoming refused to work more hours in 1885, the railroad hired Chinese workers as strikebreakers and to stir up racial animosity. The result was the Rock Springs Massacre, that killed scores of Chinese workers, and drove all the rest out of Wyoming. About 50 African American sugar cane laborers organized by the Knights went on strike and were murdered by strike breaking thugs in the 1887 Tebodo Massacre in Louisiana. The Knights strongly supported the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882 and the Contract Labor Law of 1885, as did many other labor groups, demonstrating the limits of their commitment to solidarity. While they claim to not be against immigration, these examples of anti Asian racism demonstrated that their anti racist platform was, at best, inconsistent. Decline The Knights of Labor attracted many Catholics, who were a large part of the membership, perhaps a majority. Powderly was also a Catholic. However, the Knights' use of secrecy, similar to the Masons, during its early years concerned many bishops of the Church. The Knights used secrecy and deception to help prevent employers from firing members. After the Archbishop of Quebec condemned the Knights in 1884, twelve American archbishops voted 10-2 against doing likewise in the United States. Furthermore, Cardinals James Gibbons and John Ireland defended the Knights. Gibbons went to the Vatican to talk to the hierarchy. In 1886, right after the peak of the Knights of Labor, they started to lose more members to the American Federation of Labor. It has been believed that the fall of the Knights of Labor was due to their lack of adaptability and beliefs in the old style industrial capitalism. Topic Legacy. 
Though often overlooked, the Knights of Labor contributed to the tradition of labor protest songs in America. The Knights frequently included music in their regular meetings, and encouraged local members to write and perform their work. In Chicago, James and Emily Talmadge, printers and supporters of the Knights of Labor, published the songbook, "'Labor Songs Dedicated to the Knights of Labor", 1885. The song, "'Hold the Fort'", also, "'Storm the Fort'", a Knights of Labor pro-labor revision of the hymn by the same name, became the most popular labor song prior to Ralph Chaplin's IWW Industrial Workers of the World anthem, "'Solidarity Forever". Pete Seeger often performed this song and it appears on a number of his recordings. Songwriter and labor singer Bucky Hawker includes the Talmadge version, entitled, "'Labor's Battle Song." On his CD Don't Want Your Millions Revolting Records 2000. Hawker also draws heavily on the Knights' songs and poems in his book on labor song and poetry, For Democracy, Workers and God, Labor Song Poems and Labor Protest, 1865–1895 University of Illinois Press, 1991. Immigration restriction The Knights of Labor, supported the Chinese Exclusion Act because it believed that industrialists were using Chinese workers as a wedge to keep wages low. Footnotes Topic: Grand Master Workman. Uriah Smith Stevens, 1869–1879. Terence V. Powderly, 1879–1893. James Sovereign, 1893–1901. John Hayes, 1901–1917. Topic. See also Labor unions in the United States Labor Federation competition in the United States IWW Olivier David Benoit Mary Harris Jones Topic. Further reading Topic. Scholarly studies Birdsell, William C. July 1953. The Problem of Structure in the Knights of Labor. Industrial and Labor Relations Review. 6 4, 532–546. DOI 10.2307/2518795 JSTOR 2518795 Brown, Henry J. The Catholic Church and the Knights of Labor. Washington: Catholic University of America Press, 1949. Case, Teresa Ann. The Great Southwest Railroad Strike and Free Labor 2010-1886 Cassidy, Michael J. "'Modernization and Social Crisis, The Knights of Labor and a Midwest Community, 1885–1886' Journal of American History 66 1, 41 to 61 DOI 10.2307/1894673 JSTOR 1894673
Commons, John R. et al., History of Labor in the United States, Vol. 2, 1860–1896, 4 Vol. 1918, Vol. 2 Connell, Carol, and Kim Voss. Formal Organization and the Fate of Social Movements, Craft Association and Class Alliance in the Knights of Labor. American Sociological Review Vol. 55, No. 2 April, 1990, pp. 255–269 in JSTOR, Focus on Steel Industry Fink, Leon. The New Labor History and the Powers of Historical Pessimism, Consensus, Hegemony, and the Case of the Knights of Labor. Journal of American History Vol. 75, No. 1 June, 1988, pp. 115–136 in JSTOR, Historiography Fink, Leon, Workingmen's Democracy, The Knights of Labor and American Politics. Urbana, University of Illinois Press, 1983. Grubb, Gerald N. The Knights of Labor and the Trade Unions, 1878–1886", Journal of Economic History Vol. 18, No. 2 1958, pp. 176–192 in JSTOR Kessler, Sidney H. July 1937, "...The Organization of Negroes in the Knights of Labor." Journal of Negro History. 37 3, 248–276. DOI, 10.2307, 2,715,493. JSTOR 2,715,493. Kaufman, Jason. Rise and Fall of a Nation of Joiners, The Knights of Labor Revisited". Journal of Interdisciplinary History Vol. 31, No. 4 Spring, 2001, pp. 553–579 in JSTOR Statistical Study of Competition with Other Unions and with Fraternal Societies for Members Kemmerer, Donald L., Edward D. Wickersham January 1950, "'Reasons for the Growth of the Knights of Labor in 1885–1886'", Industrial and Labor Relations Review, 3 213–220. 2, DOI, 10.2307, 2518,025. JSTOR 2518830. Levine, Susan. Labor's True Woman, Domesticity and Equal Rights in the Knights of Labor. Journal of American History Vol. 70, No. 2 September, 1983, pp. 323–339 in JSTOR. Levine, Susan. True Women, Carpet Weavers, Industrialization, and Labor Reform in the Gilded Age. Philadelphia, Temple University Press, 1984. Licht, Walter, Keeley, Gregory, Palmer, Brian, Fink, Leon Summer 1985. The Knights of Labor Commemorated and Reconsidered, Dreaming of What Might Be, The Knights of Labor in Ontario, 1880–1900, Workingmen's Democracy, The Knights of Labor and American Politics." Journal of Interdisciplinary History, 16 1, 117–123. DOI, 10.2307, JSTOR 204327. Minor, Claudia The 1886 Convention of the Knights of Labor. 
Pylon, 44, 2, 147 to 159. DOI 10.2307 275026 JSTOR 275026 Maloran, Melton Alonza. The Knights of Labor in the South. Westport, CT: Greenwood Press, 1978. Phelan, Craig. Grand Master Workman, Terence Powderly in the Knights of Labor, Greenwood, 2000, Scholarly Biography Online Edition, Voss, Kim. The Making of American Exceptionalism: The Knights of Labor and Class Formation in the Nineteenth Century. Ithaca, NY: Cornell University Press, 1994. Sociological Study. Where Norman J. The Labor Movement in the United States, 1860–1895, A Study in Democracy, 1929. Weir, Robert E. Beyond Labor's Veil, The Culture of the Knights of Labor, Pennsylvania State University Press, 1996 online edition Weir, Robert E. 1997. A Fragile Alliance, Henry George and the Knights of Labor. The American Journal of Economics and Sociology, 56, 421–439. Weir, Robert E. Knight's Unhorsed, Internal Conflict in Gilded Age Social Movement Wayne State University Press, 2000 White, Richard 2011. Railroaded, The Transcontinentals and the Making of Modern America. W. W. Norton and Company. ISBN 978-0-393-06126-0 Wright, Carol D. An Historical Sketch of the Knights of Labor, Quarterly Journal of Economics, Vol. 1, No. 2 January 1887, pp. 137–168 in JSTOR. Topic Outside U.S. Gregory Keeley and Brian Palmer, Dreaming of What Might Be: The Knights of Labor in Ontario, 1880 to 1900. New York: Cambridge University Press, 1982. Parfit, Stephen. Knights Across the Atlantic, The Knights of Labor in Britain and Ireland. Liverpool, Liverpool University Press, 2016. Pelling, Henry The Knights of Labor in Britain, 1880–1901. Economic History Review, 9 new series, 2, 313–331. DOI 10.2307/2591749 JSTOR 2591749 shows that American workers in the window glass industry set up an English chapter in 1884 to watch the business in Europe it remained small Leon Wattion and Frederick Myers, The Knights of Labor in Belgium. Westport, C.T., Greenwood Press, 1978. Also in partial translation by Frederick Myers, Institute of Industrial Relations, Los Angeles, 1959, http://www.oac.seedlib. Org, Arc Skeptical Smiley Face, 28722, BK0003 T812 J, Brand equals OAC4. Topic: Primary Sources. Topic: By Nights. Knights of Labor 1887 to 1913 Proceedings of the General Assembly 10th 30th microfilm Library of American Civilization
LAC 23217 minus 20 Knights of Labor 1878 to 1886 Record of the proceedings of the General Assembly, 1st 9th microfilm. Library of American Civilization. LAC 23214-16 Powderly, Terence Vincent 30 Years of Labor, 1859–1889. Excelsior Publishing House. p. 693. Powderly, Terence Vincent 1889. Thirty Years of Labor, 1859–1889. Excelsior Publishing House. p. 693. Powderly, Terence Vincent, Edmund James James 1891. The Labor Movement, The Problem of Today. The M. W. Hazen Company. P. 628, Powderly, Terence Vincent 1891. The Labor Movement, The Problem of Today, Chapter 15, The History of the Knights of Labor. pp. 397–428. Powderly, Terence Vincent, John Williams Hayes 1891. John A. Turchineski, Jr., ed. Terence Vincent Powderly Papers 1864–1937 and John Williams Hayes Papers 1880–1921, The Knights of Labor. pp. 109 reels. <laughs> By others A. C. Dunham. The Knights of Labor. New Englander and Yale Review, Vol. 45, No. 195 June 1886, pp. 490–498. John Stevens Durham, "'The Labor Unions and the Negro", Atlantic Monthly, Vol. 81, No. 484 February 1898, pp. 222–231. Henry George, The New Party, North American Review, Vol. 145, No. 368, July 1887, pp. 1 8. Rufus Hatch, The Labor Crisis, North American Review, Vol. 142, No. 355, June 1886 pp. 602–607. Richard J. Hinton, "'American Labor Organizations", North American Review, Vol. 140, No. 338 January 1885, pp. 48–63. M. E. J. Kelly, Women and the Labor Movement, North American Review, Vol. 166, No. 497 April 1898, pp. 408–418. George Frederick Parsons, "'The Labor Question", Atlantic Monthly, Vol. 58, No. 345, July 1886, pp. 97 to 113. Carol D. Wright, An Historical Sketch of the Knights of Labor, Quarterly Journal of Economics, Vol. 1, No. 2, January 1887, pp. 137 to 168. Topic: External links. Record of proceedings of the General Assembly of the Knights of Labor 1878. Select bibliography of Terence V. Powderly in the Knights of Labor. Catholic University of America. Retrieved October 8, 2006. Knights of Labor. New International Encyclopedia, 1905